The blessing of the Lord. Everybody say the blessing of the Lord. Say it again. One more time. Hold up two fingers. There's two ways you receive from God. One is the blessing of the Lord. The other way is miracles. Now, we have been trained in Pentecostal realm. As I was being raised Pentecostal, I didn't think God could move unless you had a famine, a fire, a lion's den, or a flood. Huh? And then God would swoop in and rescue you and show how wonderful and how strong he is. But as I have matured, I, I, I realize miracles are not God's best. And let me show you the difference. Remember, there's two ways you receive. Miracles, blessing. Put on the screen Proverbs 22, uh, 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Uh, most church people can't even say the word rich, not in church. But when the prodigal son came home, the father said, best ring, best robe, best calf. Never even mentioned the prodigal son's sin. We have preached sin so much that people are sin conscious and don't realize the father is not holding your trespasses against you. Say amen. So we're going to reset our mindset to think blessing and not miracles all the time because miracles demand crises. <laughs> miracles demand, for example, I, I get around you and I say, Brother, uh, I keep getting, you need to fix the brakes on your car. And he doesn't. And so in about a month, he goes to uh, uh, across the railroad track, and his brakes don't work, hits a train, breaks his leg, breaks his back, breaks his arm. Now he's in a full body cast. He comes to church. We lay hands on him. He rips the cast off, does a cartwheel, and while he shouts, Whoa, glory be to God. But wouldn't it have be been better if he just fixed the brakes on his car? Huh? Now then. What if he can't afford the money to fix his brakes? If he had the money to fix his brakes, it would prevent a crisis. So if you'll listen tonight, we'll graduate from a bailout mentality to where we put God first and he just adds to us and adds to us and adds to us. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know only drug dealers could have nice cars. Only drug dealers can have nice houses. So you first got to believe in it before you can believe for it. You got to believe in it before you believe for it. We have, we have come from such a poverty background. One, one guy comes up for prayer and he said, to, Brother Meg, he said, I'm going to ask the Lord to, to heal my, my neck. He said, now, my, my feet hurt, my legs hurt, but I can live with that. But if he just healed my neck. I said, I said, Brother, he will not blink the lights in heaven if he does it all. Huh? It's not going to strain God, but God wants to graduate you from bailout mentality. Have you ever had a miracle of uh, finances come through and brought, paid your house payment, paid your car payment, but guess what? Next month, you need another one. So he wants to graduate you to where your house is paid off, debt-free, money in the bank, Linda, not borrow, head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Come on, and the blessings overtake you, run you down and overtake you. So we said, well, could, could that be? You're in charge of the blessing, not God. Huh? Now, you can position yourself for a miracle. This is going to answer a lot of questions. You can position yourself for a miracle, but miracles are not guaranteed. <laughs> the blessing is, Ephesians chapter 1, Verse 3, he hath blessed us with all blessing in heavenly places. People read that and think, how can that be? Everything you ever need, will need, or shall need is already met in the spirit realm. Your faith reaches over there and pulls it over here. But you got to believe for it. you got to believe in it before you can believe for it. That makes sense to you. Miracles are temporary. You can get a guy healed of cancer. But if he don't get in church and get on the word like we preached this morning, in six months a year, it can come right back on him because God don't want you living on miracles. A miracle is a supernatural intervention on natural law. Axe heads float, red sea parts, 
fire, don't burn the heat for your children. Those are all miracles. But he don't want you living that way. He don't, he don't want you to have to sell bricks off your house to buy your, your lunch today. He wants you to live in the land that flows with milk and honey. Just flows to you and flows to you. And when you believe in it, nobody can ever stop it. The devil can't stop it. The, de the devil can't control it. Nobody else can stop it. The only person that can stop it is you. If you quit believing, if you quit believing in it, somebody say, man, I'm about to blow up. This must be blow up, church. Open your Bible now, if you would, please. Uh, you look at that. Uh, let, me, let me start over again. What makes you, now, he doesn't just talk about money. Rich, antidote sorrow means rich in fellowship, rich in grace, rich in mercy, rich in love, rich in health, rich in every area of your life. What does it? The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. So what is the blessing of the Lord? I'm glad you asked. The blessing of the Lord is a pronunciation. What? When I do a wedding, they're standing there. I look at Bubba. I'm thinking, run, Bubba, run. That's what I'm thinking. Huh? This woman here has a twin. Ugly and homely. Run, Bubba, run. They are not married until I pronounce you man and wife. Someone can die. Please suffer to taste their faults. They're dead. But they're not dead until a doctor pronounces them legally dead. Pronunciation. There's power in pronunciation. In Genesis 122, it said, I will bless you saying. So God blesses people saying. Used to, when a young man was a young lady, he'd go to the daddy and ask for the blessing. We, when we pray over our food, we pronounce a blessing. Come on, somebody. So you got to figure out what a blessing is. So the blessing of the Lord is the Lord pronouncing a blessing on you. He told Abraham, I'll bless you so you can be a blessing. So we say amen. So a blessing is a pronunciation. The reason we want to live in the blessing is called the New Testament. Have you ever wondered why you see all kinds of miracles in the Old Testament, but not that many in the epistles? Because he don't, I haven't had a crisis in 15 years. I never expect to have another one. Y'all don't get out much, do y'all? Now, see, years ago when I first started, I would drive my car without no gas. I didn't have any money to put no gas in. And I drove my car without no gas, but all the time I'm believing God, I'm sweating bullets. Huh? And I didn't have no food, and food would show up. And, 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 you know, I said to him, I said, Lord, I remember all the time, miracle here, miracle there. He said, you want to go back? I said, no, sir, I do not. I don't even think about pulling the gas station and getting $5. I don't even think that. Come on, somebody. The blessing frees you to where you're not under constraint of lack all the time. Now, the prophet ate in the mirror barrel for three and a half years. And that's a miracle. But hey, bread and water for three years? I won't deliver it from the meal barrel and go to Cracker Barrel. So we're going to show you tonight the difference between the two and how God wants to graduate you by changing your mindset. But you first got to believe in it before you can believe for it. So how many believe God wants you to have the best? Three people, praise the Lord. How many here believe, do you want your children to have the best? You do. You don't want to see your kids living in squalor and, and just making it from day to day or week to week. Uh, so the blessing of the Lord, making the rich, addeth no sorrow. I want you to turn your Bible to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. The whole reason Jesus died, if he didn't want you blessed, he shouldn't have died. If he didn't want you healed, he shouldn't have been strapped. If he didn't want you saved, he shouldn't have shed his blood. He did all of that so the blessing could come on you. And Deuteronomy says, overtake you. Yeah, but now, preacher, have you read Deuteronomy 28? If you keep all the commandments. Well, nobody ever has except one person. 
So today you ought to read it like this. Because Jesus kept all the commandments. I'll be the head and not the tail, above and not the knee. I give what he did, not what I do. I want to show you tonight you don't have to be perfect to receive the blessing. If it was, only me and Pastor Joe can be blessed. And I know too much on Pastor Joe. We talking blackmail material, honey. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, where it's written, curse every man that hangs on the tree. Now, if you don't pay your tithes, you are not cursed. Most people don't tell you that. I got enough bonus to tell you that. But you cheat yourself out of the blessing. Jesus took the curse for you. Even if you're disobedient, he took the curse for you, and all that's now is the blessing wait on you to engage to it, to receive it. Because, brother, Jesus don't curse anybody. And so what is tithing all about? It's about so the blessing can come on you. You don't have room enough to contain. So let me show you how this works. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 5, let's quote it. He wanted to bring them out of the land of wilderness into the land of milk and honey. Forty years in the wilderness. That's when you had to watch who you hang around. They can slow you down for 40 years. If they was born and raised in them 40 years, now you're 30 years old, you've never eaten anything but manna for 30 years. 30 years. All you've ever known is manna. So most people's praying is God do this and God do this and God do this. But the blessing is he's already done this. Now you engage in it and let the blessing flow to you. It takes more effort. All they had to do every day was get up and go out there and pick up the manna. Uh, the, the manna. Did you ever notice it was a temporary miracle on the last of the day? Now, on the sixth day, you picked up twice as much. If you tried to do it on other days, it would stink. Huh? Why? Because miracles are temporary. They're never superabundant. Meal barrel three years is not superabundant. Manna by the day is not superabundant. Why? He don't want you living on a desperate, I have to. Why? Because the laws of nature, guess who made the laws of nature? God did. He said they're good. He don't like to violate them. Peter walked on water. You don't need anywhere else where he walked on water. Anybody? Come on, somebody. The Red Sea didn't stay uh, uh, parted for days and months, so they're temporary. And so if you live from crisis to crisis, you'll always want to bail out. But if you get over on the Word and get the blessing working for you, it takes the struggle out of it, and God just add to you and add to you and add to you. He'll give you money with money in the bank. Huh? And so here they are. No strawberry manna. <laughs> no blueberry manna. Not even banana manna. He didn't want them to get satisfied. Why over here the land of milk and honey? Well, what's up with milk and honey? Well, over here in the land of promise, there's grass for cattle so you can have milk. And uh, y y there's flowers and trees for bees to make honey. Over here is manna, 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 manna. And even though it was angel food, they got tired of it. They began to resent it. This, they said, this is loathsome. So one day they put their foot down and said, why can't we have some quail? God said, I'll give you some quail. So for 20 miles, waist deep, up to their nose, they had quail. They had quail coming out their nose. They got to where they despised the miracle. They, they got used to it. And people today are used to asking God to do everything for them. Because when you get over in the land of milk and honey, the system changes. It ain't just going outside and picking it up. It ain't just going to church and let somebody else pray for you and get your miracle. Now you got to plow the field, plant the seed, and wait to the fall, not tomorrow. They were used to getting a miracle every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. And now the system is... As you start plowing the field, planting your seed, watering it, fertilizing it, getting the weeds out, then this crop comes in. 
you plant again and that crop comes in, you start having a perpetual heart. Once you get it going, it takes more effort, but you come to place where you plant the apple seed, grow the tree, have apples, and have apple pie the rest of your life at your convenience. I see that Jesus said you're better than a bird. <laughs> what? Better than a bird? Yeah. If a bird wants a worm, he must go worm hunting every day. But our system, <laughs> you can plant cucumbers and make pickles <laughs> and pumpkin pie. And when they snow on the ground, it's nine below. Just go to the pantry, open the door, and pour out your blessing. A worm has no worm bank. A bird. A bird has no worm barn. But you and I have the capacity to store up, to save up, to parlay, and just live in the blessing. You know the average person that don't know the Lord, they work 55 years to enjoy 11? Huh? They work 55 years to enjoy 11. In time you got a little money, you don't feel like going anywhere. Work with me, people. But the blessing of the Lord maketh you rich and added no sorrow. Now, there's wealth besides the Lord blessing you. Drug dealers are wealthy, but it adds sorrow. It hurts people. God is able to bless people without hurting anybody. And so let's dive into this. So Abraham, he goes down to uh, Egypt. There's a famine on. His wife must be an extremely good looking, kind of like my wife. She's 60 years old, but he is scared that they're going to kill him and take his woman. So he lies. That's right. The patriarch, the father of faith, lied. And Pharaoh gave him cattle, gave him gold, gave him silver. So in essence, Abraham pimped his wife. You can't get around it. He pimped his wife. He was willing to let her go into his harem. Him have sex with her for the goods he gave him. I mean, I may dress like a pimp, but I'm a preacher. <laughs> I'm not be pimping my wife. Huh? So, 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 who did God judge? Did he judge this pimp lion Abraham? No, he judged the Pharaoh. Gave him a dream. Sent a plague to his house. And the Pharaoh said, hey, take her and take all the goods and get out of here. If I own a construction company, my men are supposed to be at work at 8 o'clock. And all three of them showed up at 10 o'clock. I'd fire two of them and chew my son out. God judged Pharaoh because Abraham had a covenant with God. Abraham, even though he wasn't perfect, he's still family. Come on, somebody. And God's blessing doesn't leave you just because you have a mistake or mess up. The blessing doesn't stop. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be reversed. And you're in control of it. I don't preach myself happy. Satan can't stop it. Sin, Satan cannot. God has already blessed you with all spiritual. Let me prove it to you. I believe with all of my heart, Elvis Presley was called of God to preach. He was raised in the Assembly of God Church. He took that gift to the world. But God did not take that gift away from him. The gifts and callings are without repentance. Brother, once God gives it, it does not stop. The Bible said his eyes go to and fro looking on the whole earth, trying to find somebody he can be strong to. So God wants to bless you. Psalms 84 and verse 11 says he don't withhold any good thing. God's not holding it back. As you walk up right before him, he gives gifts to people. Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> huh? uh, Swagger, Jimmy Swagger, and, and the other cousin, Mickey Gilly. All three were called of God. One of them used it for the gospel. The other two went to the world. But God didn't take it away. In Oklahoma, we say, God not an Indian giver. We ought to kind of correct that. God not a white face giver. But the white man won't give and take away. So the blessing cannot be stopped. The blessing is eternal. 
Miracles are temporary. And so when the manna ceased, I guarantee you people went out there the next day looking for manna. And they wasn't none. Why? Because God wants to graduate you from the wilderness of struggling, just getting by. Huh? I mean, even though manna was angel food, I want little biscuits and gravy. I, I want some fig newtons. I want some pomegranates. I want some Welsh's grape juice. And over here in this system, it never stops, and you're in charge of it. You're actually in charge of your own harvest. Huh? I said, huh? He said, whatever seed you plant, if you plant a little, you'll get a little. You plant a lot, you'll get a lot. So God's not in charge. This system is seed time and harvest. So, so, so at, down through time, it went from Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob. They had respect for the blessing. Isaac's getting old now. But before he got old, he was so blessed, the Philippine kings, Philistine king, asked him to leave. They said, Isaac. You're more wealthy than all of us Philistines, so would you please leave? When was the last time a sinner was envious of your wealth? I think I hit a stump. So Queen of Sheba saw Solomon's wealth. Laban, Jacob's uncle, saw the increase on him. Potiphar saw the increase on Joseph. You can see the blessing of the Lord on people. You can see it. And you can see that mentality, oh, God, oh, God, please do something, oh, God, oh, God, bail me out. And he will. He's the God of miracles. He loves you. You can position yourself. But listen, miracles are at his discretion. Another name for miracles are gifts of the Spirit. They're as he wills. And see, if I was God, I'd just squirt miracles everywhere. But he knows your background. He knows how many times he has dealt with you to come out of the land of the wilderness. He knows how many times he told you to do certain things, and you wouldn't do them. And so he's reserving this last bailout because he don't want you to live on bailouts. Tonight, as we receive the offering, I have decided. I've prayed about it. i decided you can keep half of your stimulus check. Work with me, people. Malachites, Hittites, all them arts. Today is isms. Socialism, communism. Huh? It's a way of thinking. And so we've got to change the way we think. And, and so now Isaac wants to pass the blessing down to, to, to Esau. And so he's getting old. His eyes are not real, real good. He can't see real good. So he said, uh, Esau said, uh, you're my favorite son in essence. Uh, go kill me a deer and fix me some deer meat because uh, I don't know when I'm going to die. I'm getting close. So go fix me. Go, go hunt something and, and fix my favorite meal. But Rachel, excuse me, Rebecca, heard what he said. And she got her favorite, Jacob. He's a mama's boy. Esau, he had Norman. He clothes stink. Jacob puts on his clothes. Jacob puts wool on his neck and on his hands. Sneaks it up to his daddy. His daddy said, uh, are you Esau? Yeah, daddy, I Esau. Isn't that a lie? He was Jacob. He said, uh, you, you, you smell like Esau. He had changed clothes. He said, you feel like Esau, but you sound like, like Jacob. You sure you're Esau? Yeah, Daddy, I Esau. Lied twice. He said, how'd you get this deer meat so quick? He said, the Lord brought it across my path. That wasn't deer meat, that was mutton. That's three lies I caught him in. And yet, he pronounced the blessing on him. I said, he pronounced the blessing on him. The blessing came on him. When Esau come in a little later, he said, Daddy, I'm ready for the blessing. He said, and and Esau, Isaac began to tremble and shake. 
I've given the blessing, and I can't take it back. When God blesses you, he can't take it back. In salvation, you got blessed with everything God has to offer, and he'll never take it back. It's up to you to continue and receive everything he has for you. Well, what about backsliding? Are you an idiot? Who wants out? This is the best deal in town. This is the best deal in town. You was a child of the devil, and now you're a child of God, an heir of God, and joint heir with Jesus Christ. I don't want out. And in the ages to come, all God's going to do is bless us more and more and more. He's a blesser. That's who he is. So Esau said, hey, you, don't you have a blessing for me? He said, no, I've done giving it. See, we, we don't think that way. You don't realize that there's times you curse your children. I didn't say cuss. I said curse. Jesus didn't cuss the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree. When you call your children a moron or an idiot or tell them they'll never amount to anything, they get to where they believe it. You're a mistake. They get to where they believe it. All you have to do is believe in it, and it makes it happen. Parents need to be careful telling their kids, well, you can't do nothing right. You're cursing them. They start believing it, and the curse comes. The curse is activated. Deuteronomy 30, 19, I said before you blessing and cursing, therefore you choose. You choose what you believe. I'm going to believe I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the country. I'm the head and not the tail and above and not. I didn't get there overnight, but once I got it going, once I got it going, I ain't never going to stop it because I like biscuits and gravy. I like homemade biscuits and homemade butter dipped in homemade honey. Now, you can all eat all the manna you want to. I don't care if it is angel food. I like some variety. So miracles are temporary. Miracles are never superabundant. But the blessing is superabundant. Think about this. In the Garden of Eden, before man fell, they're living in total blessing. There's no need for a miracle. Ain't only two people on the planet. But God anticipated their need. Adam didn't really say, God, I'm hungry. And God said, oh, yeah, I forgot. I need to plant some trees. He anticipated their need. There's already enough oxygen with two people to support seven billion people. The blessing is superabundant. Huh? Miracles is barely get along. You might get them, you might not. You can position, I've been there, I've been there 10,000 times when we're believing for a miracle and it didn't manifest. Because it's as he wills. You don't know the whole story. You can believe for him, position you for him, but God wants to graduate you over to the land that flows with milk and honey. And so we need to develop a respect for the blessing. If you want honor, start showing honor. You want bless. Be a blessing. I understand. You've got to catch on. You see, you plow your heart, plant God's seed in it, and your own heart produces the blessing. That's reading you're in charge of it. Go to Numbers 23, 19. If you have your Bible, can you put that on screen? Numbers 23, 19. It says this. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he should repent. If he said it, will he not do it? If he spoke it, would not bring it to pass. Say it real slow. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he should repent, that he should repent, repent, repent. Oh, I remember a scripture in the New Testament. The gifts and callings of God are that repentance. Once God gives something, he don't ever change his mind. If you called a preach when you was nine, and now you're 90, you're still called. Has he said it? Should he not do it? Has he not spoken it? Pronounced it? Said it? Shall he not make it good? He's binding himself to the blessing. Next verse, please. Now, this is Balaam 
and Balak. I don't know where in the world they get these names. Who would name a child Balaam? Sound like Balaam are. Balak. What's Balak? Balak goes to hire Balaam because Balaam is a prophet. Balaam is the soothsayer of the day. He goes to God, gets a word, and speaks it, and it comes to pass. So Balak wants him to curse the children of Israel. And guess what? He tries three times. Here's this dude that's a prophet of God. He goes to God to try to get God to curse the children. Look what he said. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. You, you can pay me good money, but I can't stop it. God won't change his mind. He's not a man. I cannot reverse it. It's amazing to me that Balak had enough belief in Balaam that he could pronounce something and change it. I mean, when's the last time you hired someone to curse your enemy? We don't even think about that. The power of life and death is in your tongue. The power of cursing and blessing is in your tongue. Now, fasten your seatbelt. Next verse, please. This is going to tear Pentecostals plumb up. He hath not beheld the iniquity of Jacob. He didn't look at his mistakes. He didn't look at his fault and blessed him anyhow. Is that what it says? If I can read, he blessed Abraham. He pimped. He lied. He's afraid. He, he blessed Jacob. Now, I'm not advocating lying. That is what I do. I, but all these people had respect for the anointing. They had respect for the blessing. They didn't do everything perfect over here. But see, Esau didn't have respect for the blessing because he sold his birthright. You've got to believe in it before you can believe for it. So when someone asks you, how are you doing? Don't say, well, I'm losing my teeth, my hair, my job, my memory. Or what were we talking about? Huh? <laughs> You say this, I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. I am blessed and highly favored. See, when you start believing it, the blessing starts flowing. So what does Matthew 6, 33 say? Everybody can quote it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom? Seek ye first the way the king rules. How does the king rule? How does God rule? It's the most powerful thing on the planet. He rules by seed. We overlook it, think it's not important. But when man fell, the first thing God said, I'm going to prepare a seed, and he's going to bust your head. Huh? Didn't he? 500 years, Noah's on a, on a boat. What was the purpose? To save seed alive. I would have done it that way. But that's how the king rules. How'd he get you? He planted Jesus a seed, and you come up little seedlings called Christian. Born again in cultural seed. So the blessing system is the seed time harvest system. And after a while, it'll catch up with you. If you're 75, 80 years old, and you ain't got nothing, you awful dumb. I only got three more nights. You've made bad choices, made bad decisions, sowed bad seed, and you want God to bail you out. Well, how many times he going to have to bail you out? God did not put the name of Jesus and the gifts of the Spirit in the body of Christ to heal ourselves. If you like crises, help yourself. And chances are he'll bail you out. But in my entire ministry of 47 years, I've only seen him healed on a gift three times. I've never seen him heal the same person four times. Deaf ear. Guy comes up, ears are open. Years so later, got same guy, he comes back, ears are open. Another year goes back, come back, ears are open. Fourth time, could not. In three years, God intended for him to get in church, get on the word, believe God for himself. Come on, that's what I preach this morning. The word is the seed. Anything you need, go to the book and find the sack of seed. That's the blessing. You can't outrun it. You're in charge of it, and the devil can't stop it. So in Revelation, 
It said, uh, I have somewhat against you, church at Laodicea, because you've listened to the counsel of Balaam. Well, what was the counsel of Balaam? He was in it for the reward. Peter says it. Jude says it. So what's quietness for gospel church? Your motive has to be you want to be blessed so you can be a blessing. It can't be greed. There's a lot of tests you can fake. You can cheat, but you can't cheat on God's test. He knoweth thee. He seeth inside of thy hearteth. He don't hold your faults against you. I'm going to say something that's going to permeate your hair. David saw it. He said, blessed is the man. What? Blessed. Blessed is the man to whom God will not impute sin. I'm getting ahead of myself. God don't hold your sin against you. Sin hurts you. Sin opens the door to the devil. Gives him inroads to your life. And you'll be judged for sin. Sin will cost you. More than you want to pay. Take you further than you want to go. And keep you longer than you want to stay. But it's not God doing it. It's your own sin doing it. The wages of sin is death. And sin will pay you. But God asking for wisdom. He don't find fault with you. He's not holding your faults against you. He didn't hold the faults of iniquity against Jacob. We live in a better covenant. David saw our day. He said, Woo, I wish I could live in y'all's day. Because blessed is the man to whom God will not impute sin. All we ever heard growing up is sin, 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 sin. So everybody lived in constant condemnation. I'm not advocating you sin. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying there's a great price to pay if you continue in sin as a Christian. But God's not holding against you. If God held sin against you, how would you ever get saved? You could never be healed, never receive any time, because you know why? Leviticus 4, you've got sin of ignorance. Don't look at me so holy. There's a lot of things you don't know. There's things I don't know. So Leviticus, they offered a sacrifice year after year for the sin of ignorance. Things they didn't know, they're breaking. You don't know everything. How many has changed some of your belief as you matured? Duh, we're all on a journey. We should be maturing. Some things I used to believe, I don't believe anymore. Just the other day, I, I heard of a, a nationally known preacher say that God brought COVID. I thought, how stupid can you be and still breathe? That's crazy. God is not the author of sin, sickness, disease. He does not use sickness or disease to teach you. Now, in the Old Testament, they were not privileged to be born again. And so God had to take drastic measures and sometimes kill whole cities. Why would God do that? Because even their dog was demon-possessed. Their cow was demon-possessed. And there was no deliverance in the Old Testament. We live in the blessedness of grace. To, come on, somebody. This is, man, this is the best deal on the planet. Book of Acts said there's things the law could not justify, couldn't get rid of. They couldn't, you couldn't cast devils out of people in the Old Testament. Are you listening to me? But now, it's, so back then, they just killed them. Now you don't have to kill them. You can get them delivered. Bring your mother-in-law to church and get her delivered. So the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, has no sorrow. You don't have to be perfect. Just believe in the perfect one. <laughs> I don't know about this now, preacher. Miracles are always future. Blessing is always past. He's not going to bless you. He already has. With all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It's up to you to receive them. It's up to you to believe in them. So I believe now. Anywhere I go, I used to struggle. I used to look at the crowd. I used to count the off and go, ooh, ooh. Huh? God, we need a miracle. 
and we've had miracles over the years. But thank God we come to a place where now it just flows, and I ain't going to stop it. Huh? Now, if you love Christ, he's help yourself. But he wants everybody here out of that. He wants everybody here so blessed. What if we were so blessed we could pay everybody that came here, pay their house off? You'd have a problem. He'd call it a parking problem. Go to that church. They'll pay your house off now. Solomon was so wealthy, they just dumped silver outside and didn't even count it. We don't know how to ex experience because of our background. I came from a family of 13 kids. I didn't know chicken had white meat until I was about 14 years old. All I ever got was gizzard. And it didn't have no meat on it. It was crooked. Huh? I know chicken had breasts and legs and wings. You'd be surprised how much of that is still in us. And it's hard for us to wrap around. Well, now, preacher, I read that. I read that. That we're blessed. But I'm not blessed. I, I got a mortgage and my car's falling apart and Kids are acting like their daddy. Engage the blessing. Engage, the, embrace it. Start believing in it and start believing for it. And when someone asks you, how you doing? Quit giving them the sad story. And I understand, because I go to a lot, of different, a lot of different churches. And their songs, oh, I'm so tired. And so we be rusted, busted, and disgusted. That sounds like you're really blessed. And they'll testify of what God crushed my leg. And God gave me COVID. But while I was getting my vaccine, I met a pretty nurse and I witnessed to her. Well, wouldn't it have been a whole lot better to walk in there and lay hands on about 15 people, get them healed, and then witness to the nurse? The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. People don't like, to under, don't like to hear this, but may I ask you a question? Was Jesus rich? He was. You can't pay tithes and get offerings and stay broke. Huh? He had clothes they gambled for. You don't gamble for goodwill clothes. Huh? Rode a brand new donkey. Even had the new donkey smell. Did. Did. Rich people followed him around and ministered to him. Chusa, Susanna, Herod Stewart. He didn't have a burial plan. But he was going to stay there three days. But even in his barrel, he was in a rich man's tomb. Huh? He became poor that through his poverty we have access to his wealth. <laughs> Moses cost him 40 years because of his anger. What's your anger costing you? Now, God will look over it, but if he deals with you and deal with you and deal with you and you won't fix it, sooner or later, it'll start chiefing in the blessing. He didn't do it. We did it. But if you believe God, and the best you know how, it will never stop the blessing, only you. So how did Balaam's counsel stop the blessing on Israel? They began to commit whoredom with the Amalek. Amalek's... It's more than just a word. You'll find in the book of Exodus, it says the Amalek sin come to full duration. They went into Israel, into Egypt. Seventy went in, three and a half million came out in 400 years. But the penalty of sin had to be paid for by their stupidity. They mixed married with Amalek, and they shouldn't. Well, if there's only 70 people went in, half of them are men, and only these 35 women. If you had any kids, you only got about 20 women that married 
in intermarried, and then the men intermarried with the Ammonite women, but it caused chaos, and they went into bondage for 400 years. You, need, you, you don't need to just jump in bed with everybody. You don't need to marry someone whose commitment level is not the same as yours. You're creating curses that can last a long time. That child that you had, that guy that was mean and nasty, now your child act mean and nasty. He inherited it. You got to come to church and break that thing, get him started on the blessing. Come on, somebody. It's not automatic. It takes more effort to dig, to plant, to harvest. Now, let me tell you why a lot of God's people don't harvest. Have you ever seen a crop of corn go jump in the barn? No. But we're still expecting God to rain the manna and bring it to me. But if you're driving down the road and the Lord quickens you, buy that two acres. What do I do with two acres? I said, buy the two acres. What you don't know, they're going to put an interstate through here, and that two acres will pay you $7 million. This is how Norval Hayes got his money. This is how, this how Kenneth Hagin was blessed. I remember one of Jesse's stories. A guy came to him and said, uh, there's a piece of land over here. And uh, back then there was no Interstate 10 through New Orleans. And so uh, he said, there's a piece of land over here. I don't have any acres. He, I think it's three acres. And uh, he said, uh, they only want $3,000. The Lord told me to buy it, but I, I'll take yours and y'all will cut it three ways. See, Jesse said he had $1,000. But he just, what, it's swampy looking. But the interstate came through, and they need that lamp, that ramp as an off ramp. Paid three million dollars. He could have turned a thousand into three million, into a million after they split it. That's called harvesting. Two or three years ago, I had a temporary office in Georgia. Bought a little piece of property, only a half an acre or so. Turned into an office, used it for two, two, almost three years. When I sold it, I made $20,000. Bought it one day and sold it one day. Everybody said, you ought to go get a real estate. I said, are you kidding me? I ain't giving my money away. I'm a Jew. I sell his house. Huh? It's a God thing. I said, it's a God thing. I said, it's a God thing. Blessings overtake you. He just adds to you. But what if you don't have the courage to step out and do what he tells you? That's what they were struggling with. They was used to automatic manna. Now I got to go plant the fig. I got to change my whole mindset. Do you know fig trees don't produce till seven years? Pecan trees take four to five to six years for the time you plant them, for them to start producing pecans. Not everybody's face off in, in, by Friday. But once you get the pecan trees are going, and you're Mrs. Smith, and now you've, you, you, you sell pecan pies. Woo. You, it, it, <laughs> this is how the system works. From bailout mentality to superabundant mentality. Amen. So tonight, we will pronounce blessings on people. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Would you and your family stand up? Now, I know you're already blessed, Remington. I pronounce blessing upon you, debt-free. You'll be debt-free all the days of your life, super abundant. I pronounce health and wealth and longevity. I pronounce your kids gifted. I pronounce your kids gifted in academics, athletes, Every area of your life, you will succeed and be a witness and a sign to the world as the blessing of God shall rest upon you and people will be able to see it, not deny it. They'll ask you what you're doing, and you'll say, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. You shall grow in favor with God and man from this day forward, debt-free, healthy, wealth and wise in Jesus' name. Go ahead and give the Lord a good, good praise.